What's up, Facebook land? It's Chris Angel coming at you for another episode of Marketing for the Rest of Us. Here we are outside of the Paseo Hotel. We are going to go live today with uh, biggest, my biggest, one of my biggest marketing paradigms. Uh, if you saw my post this morning, uh, you saw it was about paradigms. You, you are one paradigm away from changing your life. Uh, now, in, in our lifetime, we'll consume uh, or have a bunch of different paradigm shifts. But the point is in life, I think, to start looking for the paradigm shift, not just information. So that's your short recap of my post this morning. Don't just go buy information. Don't buy the course. Don't buy the book. Don't do the stuff for information. Buy the course. Buy the book. Go to the courses for paradigm shifts because it's the paradigms that change your life, not the information. Okay? All right. Inside of that, I want to share with you one of my biggest paradigm shifts in marketing. So... Um, let me start with this. At 24, at the age of 24, uh, I got into the real estate industry. I got my real estate license. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know where I fit professionally. Um, I was a janitor for like uh, six months. That was painful. Uh, I thought I would be a teacher and I went student teaching and sixth graders were mean and I didn't like that at all. Um, I, I just didn't know where I fit. And that can be hard as a young man when you're setting out into the world to try to uh, make a name for yourself, to try to, to try to build stuff, to produce stuff, and you don't know where you fit. So I got into real estate um, after reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which was another great paradigm shift, by the way. Um, and as I went through real estate uh, sales as a real estate agent, I did not feel in alignment with how I was being told or taught to produce sales, how to produce leads. How to create how to create clients didn't like calling my sphere of influence I didn't like calling my my friends and family because I it felt awkward right like hey I'm calling you but what I really want to know is if you want to buy or sell a house or have a referral for me and that didn't feel good to me and so uh, I also didn't like cold calling for sale by owners and expired listings I didn't like that at all because that felt forced and contrived um, so that also was not a, a congruent fit for me um, and then I went and looked at just a bunch of uh, other types of like print advertising and things like that. Felt too expensive for me. So look, you get it, right? There were all these different things that weren't fitting for me. My question for you is, have there be, been or are there things right now in business that don't seem to fit for you? Do you have things in your uh, attempt to grow your business? Do you have things that you've been taught that don't feel right for you? Right, and so you keep trying to find the right thing. Like I tried to find the right thing. And the cool part is, you know, your soul knows, you know, like there's a litmus test for whether it's congruent or not. Your soul knows when it's in alignment. When you find a paradigm that's in alignment with your soul, it makes your heart sing. You're like, oh, this is my jam. This is my thing. I could do this. This I could do. <laughs> So my, one of mine was, so, so picture this, right? So now I'm in real estate for six, I sold for six and a half years. And I just, listen, just out of, just out of enthusiasm and hustle, I was able to make it. But I never really found, in my real estate sales, I never really found my, the paradigm that was my mojo for, for growing a business. And that's, and then I got this opportunity to run a real estate company for five years. That felt more congruent to me and as and part of my job to market uh, the company and to grow that company, um, I, I did it. I stumbled into this, by the way, but I did it through training. I love to teach. Teaching's very congruent for me, so I would I would teach classes to my entire MLS, like all the agents in my city. No matter what company you're at, you're free to come to my training, and it was good training, and that was congruent. Now that wasn't a paradigm. That just I stumbled into that. But there's a good lesson in that, isn't there? Like the things that you gravitate to can be your biggest asset in getting the results you want to get. And it may not be, nobody was teaching that. Nobody was teaching how to recruit uh, agents through teaching, but I decided to do it at my local level. Now, here's the paradigm. The paradigm came, so during that time of running this real estate company, um, I was interested in marketing and I picked up a book called Tribes. I invested in a book that was probably 15 to $20. I invested in a book and what I got was a paradigm shift. I got a paradigm shift in the book called Tribes. And the thing that, um, the thing that I, and it heavily influenced my perspective on marketing and, uh, to this day. So here's, here's what I believe about tribes. 
what I got out of that book, um, God, it was so great too, because I just felt like I found my place. I'm like, ah, oh, this is what I've been trying to find that I couldn't put words to. Right? You guys will find that. You'll be, you'll be like, you'll, you'll have this um, unsettling feeling in your soul. Like, this isn't it. Nope, this isn't it. You'll keep trying stuff. This isn't it. Nope, this isn't it. And then you'll, then you'll pick up something or you'll go to a course or you'll read a book or you'll watch a Facebook Live and you'll be like, ah, you're putting words to what I've been feeling. So in the, in the book of tribes, here's what I got. Seth Godin talks about um, that a tribe is a group of people connected to one another connected to a leader and connected to an idea. That's what a tribe is. And inside of that, it's the tr- your ability to sell, your ability to market is going to come is going to come down to whether your tribe is willing to follow you, whether your tribe believes you. If your tribe doesn't believe you, well then they're not going to do business with you. And what opened up for me what that I couldn't see all the years prior in real estate was that it's not I saw so many agents marketing themselves about, around real estate. I had tried to market myself around real estate and it didn't feel right to me. And all of a sudden what I got that is so second nature to who we are as humans was that we don't buy, especially in real estate, but we don't buy from people because they're, they're a real estate agent. We buy because we feel connected to them in some way. It was tribal, right? And so what I got was that this, by the way, this is why people can um, not, perfect strangers cannot know each other, meet each other at an event and say, I like scuba diving. And the other, the other person's, I like scuba diving. And now we're fast friends because we have this shared interest and we could talk about all the different things about scuba diving. And after we talk about scuba diving, a whole other option of things like family can come up. Now we can talk about, now we can talk about, uh, uh, all the other stuff in life besides just uh, scuba diving, right? Including whatever it is that you sell. So that's the power of having a tribe, right? Is that you get to you get to um, you get to build a real human connection with somebody that isn't about your product or your service, right? Oops. That actually feels like it matters. I think for most of us, my tribe, us, we, marketing for the rest of us, we want to have conversations with people. Ivan, I see you were on here. I don't know if you're still on here. Um, We want to have conversations that matter. If you guys haven't checked out Ivan's book, he's got a book called uh, Conversations. You can go to uh, Amazon, I believe, uh, and check out Ivan's book there called Conversations. And he actually has a show now called Conversations About Conversations. Now, that is a thing, right? Like that's a topic. You can, but when you, we want to have conversations that matter. And from that place, you can actually then start to um, get into other conversations around the things that you actually sell. But you don't earn my attention unless you have an idea that we share in common. That's the thing about a tribe, right? A tribe is a group of people connected to one another, connected to a leader, and connected to an idea. And what most people are missing in their marketing is the idea. They don't have the idea. In real estate, what's the idea? What are you going to market about? Real estate? That's not an idea that we share. That's not tribal. Real estate is not tribal. So you can't, you can't build an entire content library around real estate because it's, I, don't, I, the person watching your content, doesn't care. You have to figure out the inroad to relationship with me in your content that is tribal. What's the idea that connects us? And then from there, once you have that conversation, it can evolve into the things that you sell right? So if you just like, look, just think about the things that are tribal. What things are, what ideas connect people, right? Hobbies, passions, uh, convictions, values. These are the things that, that tie people together. So when you think about your content, you want to think about the things that you cherish. What things do you hold dear? What values do you have? What interests do you have? And then, and then who are the people that also share that conviction. Now, this is the good news. I just had somebody um, ask me a question about my, my video yesterday. Right? And the question was, well, my passions are in technology and politics, um, but I've, you know, I, I don't know if he said this, but I think this is where we all go with that. I've heard that those are bad things to talk about because politics is very polarizing, right, for example. So, um, so the thing about that is that, yes, politics is very 
polarizing and you'll find a lot of haters. But the flip side of that is that you're going to find that there are, that you're going to build a stronger tribe. Because why? Why? Because there's an idea that is shared, an idealism, right? An ideal, an idea that is shared with the tribe. And, it, and you don't, and what the cool part about tribes is that you don't have to work for it as hard. If you're a Democrat and I'm a Democrat, we have immediate uh, connection. If you're a Republican and I'm a Republican, we have immediate things to talk about. And we ha- and there is this there is this sense that we're coming from the same place. Like we have the same set of values so we can talk about things faster, quicker. We can get to the deep stuff faster and quicker, right? Uh, we have, maybe we have similar ideas about uh, family. Maybe we have similar ideas about education. But do you see like the, the connection happens so much faster? And in this, listen, in this day and age of content marketing, if you're going to cut through the noise, if people, if you're going to earn attention, then, then I have to know that you and I share an idea. Otherwise, I'm not interested. If you and I can't see eye to eye, I'm not interested. So your content has to reach me from a place of I get that you get that we share the same thing, the same values, the same idea. Guys, this is a paradigm shift for people. It was for me when I read Tribes, and it is for me now, and it is for all, a lot of you who are still trying to market your business based on your business. You're going to earn more attention. And I'm, listen, I'm an early adopter, so I'm ahead of most of you. I'll just say that right now. But in the next 5, 10, 20 years, if you don't adjust to this paradigm, that your marketing is most likely not going to be about your product or service. It's going to be something that resonates with me in my life around an idea that I hold. And from that place, you can then open up a door to talk to me about what you serve. But until I feel connected to you, I'm not going to do business with you through your marketing. For my tribe, you're emotionally intelligent and you get this. So, so, so uh, you're welcome. This is the paradigm shift for you. You don't have to be, like when I was in my 20s and 30s feeling like I had to market uh, real estate stuff to people and it just felt off and I couldn't explain why, this is why. I, I'm emotionally intelligent. I can, this is why. I just didn't know how to put words to it. I didn't, know, I, didn't expl- I didn't know how to explain it. But I'm explaining it to you right now. Right? I'm saving you all the learning curve that I had to go through and I'm giving it to you right now. The paradigm shift in your marketing is you need to find what it is you're passionate about. Then you need to record it. Then you need to produce it. And then you need to post it. That's it, right? You need to find what it is you're passionate about. You need to find it. You need to record it. You need to produce it, and then you need to post it. That's it, and it starts there. Like your entire content marketing strategy will feel so much easier and will actually give you life and joy when you start to speak about the things that actually matter to you. you won't, you'll actually be like, I can't believe this is marketing. I can't believe this is marketing. For me, this, this Facebook Live is my marketing, yes? Like I'm, this is content marketing for me. Why? Because I love to talk to business people who have a big difference to make in the world but can't figure out what to say. And they can't figure out how to do all the social posting thing. I love it. I love talking about marketing. And so this, I could talk about this all day long. This is episode 63, I think, or 64 of this show. So you need to go find what it is you're passionate about First of that's step number one. Don't, don't, listen. Step number one is go find what you're passionate about. It is not, what am I selling? It is not, who am I trying to sell to? It's not that because the minute you go there, you get weird in your, your logic. You get weird in, in your strategy about how you're trying to market. It has to start with, what am I passionate about? What could I talk about? I said this yesterday. What could I talk about on a daily or weekly basis and never get tired of? That's where you start. Once you go through that question, then you'll find it. You'll find your passion. Then you can go, who, who in the world has that same passion that I could then... See, because what happens when you, when you post your content, your tribe will find you, right? Your tribe 
If you talk about politics, the people who love the same worldview you have about politics will find you. And now there's a conversation started. And, you know, if you're, depending on how polarizing your topic is, you'll also find haters. But that should, listen, that is just part of the game now. That's just part of the game now. Okay. And if you try to play it safe and not speak about any idea to any tribe, then don't do it. What's the point? You're not going to earn anybody's attention by trying to be vanilla to everybody. It's not going to work. You need to speak directly to someone, but you have to speak from your passion. So again, step one, find it. Step two, record it. Step three, produce it. Step four, post it. That's it. That's it. That's it. And as you do that day after day after day after day, find it, record it, produce it, post it day after day after day, what you'll start to find are your tribe. Your tribe will start to find you. Your, your tribe will start to interact with you. You know what's funny? 64 episodes into this show, every time I post, somebody new is interacting with me. Some of them actually direct message me and we actually start a conversation and now I feel like I know a lot of them. Isn't that weird? That's the cool thing about social media. Like, I actually feel like I know some of these people now, though I've never met them in person, because they're, they're commenting on my content. They're in, they're, they are interacting with me about the things I said that were my passions and my point of view. That's what makes this work. You show up every day to, to record, produce, and post your passionate perspective on the world and you will find your tribe finds you. And as you do that, you will find that your sphere of influence grows. And your sphere of inf- and this is great, guys, because some of you right now in your sphere of influence in the traditional sense, your, fr- your friends and family, your friends and family don't actually share the same perspective as you. Not all of them, maybe not even most of them. And so if you're gonna do business with your friends and family that don't share the same point of view, it's you don't have as much fun because they're not as similar as you. But, but when you start to produce content from your passion and your tribe finds you, what happens is then when they reach out to do business with you, they're like the best clients in the world. You're like fast friends. You're like, this was made to be. That's why I love content marketing, because you actually get better leads. You get better leads because there are people who have consumed your content, listen, and they're consuming all of it. They're gonna, if they like it, they'll go back for more. And the more they consume, the more they like you. And when they like you that much, and they've been indoctrinated by your point of view, they're like, oh, I like your point of view. I like how you see the world about marketing. Then they reach out to you and they say like, hey, listen, I had this thought, can you help me? Those are the best leads, those are the best leads because they're like friends, because you're from the same tribe. So again, one of the biggest, so let's wrap this up. One of the biggest paradigms I ever got uh, was from the book Tribes, because I realized that marketing was about human connection. Marketing was about, marketing was about sharing an idea and making a connection from that place, and then being able to open up the conversation to business. So uh, that's it, gang, for this episode. I will drop in some some principles here uh, in the comments below and au- the audio companion to this where I drop in the principles about how do we actually get to this place. But um, for now, I'm going to say goodbye to you in this show and we'll see you tomorrow for another episode of Marketing for the Rest of Us. Thanks for hanging out with me. See ya.